Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror comedy film, Dog House. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins by introducing a group of male friends on their way to their boys weekend. There's Vince, who's heartbroken from his recent divorce, ignoring Neil's phone call in the morning. There's Neil, who awfully treats women like objects. There's Graham, who stops his boyfriend from joining Neil's planned boys weekend, because girls aren't allowed. There's Mikey, who chooses to ignore his wife's warning not to go, and is concerned because the incident at Neil's divorce party where courtesans tagged along, might happen again. His wife threatens him with a divorce, and is about to throw away her marriage ring, but Mikey laughs and tells her he glued the ring when she was asleep, and then leaves. Then there's Patrick, listening to stress therapy from his iPod, while his wife bombards him with complaints about leaving her for the weekend, even though there's a planned dinner with her parents. Then there's Nerd Matt, a comic shop owner. Later, Mikey and Graham fetch Vince from his apartment to bring him on the boys' weekend, despite ignoring Neil's invitation. However, Mikey returns to the corridor, when he notices Vince's lighter left behind on the balustrade. After leaving their houses, they drink and chatter first in a pub, except for Vince, who's quiet. Neil looks for tardy Banksy, and Patrick voluntarily calls him. Meanwhile, Banksy's about to ride his van, when his phone rings beside his house keys inside his locked house. When Patrick reaches Banksy's voicemail, they insult his laziness. Mikey asks Patrick why he brought golf clubs, and Graham thinks golf therapy won't work in Vince's situation. Neil then recalls Vince's fearlessness, for he once shielded his mates from a raging bullet that dug into his wallet. Vince shows his wallet, revealing the bullet hole. But when Mikey holds it up, Vince's ex-wife's photo falls off the table, and Mikey immediately apologizes. Afterward, the group hypes up Neil, as he lists their to-do list once they reach the countryside moodly. Shortly their booked minibus arrives, driven by a female driver, whom Neil gives a pet name, Candy. The group leaves the pub with Candy, and Neil brags that women love him, when they come across two females gazing at him. Meanwhile, Banksy's van breaks down in the middle of the road, and even the traffic enforcer insults his car for being hopeless to fix. On the minibus, the group travels to Moodley, and Candy cheers up Vince, reasoning that rape, murder, or castration are worse than divorce. Afterward, Candy wonders why they booked at Moodley, a small dead end in the middle of the woods. Vince explains they'll stay in Mikey's Nan's house in Moodley, while she's away, then Neil excitedly adds that women outnumber men in the village. En route, Patrick listens to his stress therapy, when the minibus unexpectedly stops. There are rotten and gutted rams blocking the only pathway to Moodley. Candy and Vince remove the rams off the road, while Graham asks Mikey where's his nan. Mikey replies that his nan is on a cruise, while builders fix her house. Then, they realize that Mikey's nan doesn't know about their group stay at all. Suddenly a phone rings with a ringtone match of the day, and they all check their phones, because they all use the same ringtone. It turns out that Vince's ex-wife is calling him. Another phone rings, and it's Mikey this time, where his wife threatens to trash his PlayStation. Just then Neil is through with all the calls, and commands everyone to keep the phones in a bag, for them to focus on the trip. They arrive at Moodley before sunset. Patrick approaches the village's map, and everyone notices it's barren. Neil tells Mikey they'll leave later, and Candy, whose eyes are suddenly reddened, applies eye drops on her eyes. The group heads first, and Mikey follows, and even kicks a football with a dash of blood in it. They examine the village, and Graham dictates that Mikey will break enter his nan's house to prepare the house for their stay, while their group waits inside the pub for a drink. Matt volunteers to offer beer to Candy on the bus, and everyone agrees besides Neil. Mikey and Matt separate from their group that enters the pub. Matt stops by first in a burning wood shop, and notices campaign posters of a politician, that's sponsored by Wondwash, a washing soap brand. As for Mikey and his attempt to save the day, he searches for the house keys under garden gnomes, and behind him is a severed hand clasped on a lawnmower. After entering the scenic route, he finally finds the key, and notices a bloody handprint on the fence. At the pub, Neil relieves himself in the bathroom, and watches the woman in the next stall emitting much blood with diabetes. He then returns with the group, and notices the stench smell wafting in the air. Behind the counter, they fail to see a rotting corpse. Neil then leaves to fetch Matt outside the witchcraft shop, who's busy examining a bullet case. His sudden appearance startles Matt, who screams like a dolphin. Back at Mikey, he looks behind the fence, and sees a bride eating an intestine. When the bride notices him, it grabs the axe, and chases after him. Meanwhile, the group gathers outside the witchcraft shop, and sees a hooded beggar walking on the road. They immediately search for coins the moment she faces them, when suddenly a soldier lunges at the beggar, and raises his combat knife to kill it. 
The group rushes to the two, and Vince tackles and punches the soldier, but the soldier manages to flip him over. Neil joins the fight, and hits the soldier on the chest, but the soldier throws him off. The beggar grabs the combat knife, and stabs Neil's hands. The soldier tries to explain something, but Vince knocks him out. Unexpectedly, Mikey comes out from behind, and smashes the garden gnome on the beggar's head, knocking her out, and revealing a horrifying face. Mikey explains that it's like Evil Dead in Matt's comic shop, and points to the street, showing infected women approaching them. The group rushes to the minibus, while carrying the unconscious soldier. Upon arriving at the minibus, they learn Candy is infected too. Neil closes the minibus door, and they use the scenic route to go to Mikey's Nan's house. En route, they discover a gutted soldier pinned on the fence. Neil approaches the body to retrieve the gun, when he unexpectedly grunts and wakes up, telling them the gun's empty. He warns, don't go to the woods, and laughs when Vince asks him what's in the woods. Out of nowhere, the infected bride sneaks behind, and splits the gutted soldier's head in two. The group screams in fear, and bolts to Mikey's Nan's house. Mikey searches for the key from his trousers with 11 pockets, while his friends toss paint buckets at the approaching horde. Behind Matt is the infected snipper that attacks him, but Vince temporarily stuns it by throwing black paint on it. Mikey eventually finds the key and opens the house. Upon arriving inside, the horde outside retreats. Vince gets angry, because their supposed boys weekend is ruined. Neil tries to call for help, but the telephone is cut off. Patrick comes out of the kitchen, and gives a damp towel to Neil to cover his wound. Afterward, they speculate why women have become rabid and cannibals. Vince thinks it must be in the air that only affects women. Matt then asks where the men are, but Neil unexpectedly asks them, keep quiet. Neil looks out the window and is surprised by the flocks of crows crowing. Their scream startles the soldier from unconsciousness, who answers, all men are dead. Matt guesses it must be a biological weapon that went out of control, but the soldier answers, it's classified. The tension grows stronger as they confront the soldier, when suddenly Patrick comes out of the kitchen again, and says the kettle's boiling. So they drink tea in the kitchen, and learn that the virus only affects women, nobody survives long enough to create a cure, and a majority of the horde search for fresh meat in the woods. That night the group lets Neil lure out Candy from the minibus, because women love him. After removing Candy, the rest of them enter inside. However, when the soldier revives the engine, the barmaid and the bride are in the back seats. They quickly exit the minibus, and Patrick plays a tug-of-war with the barmaid using a duffel bag, until its strap snaps, believing it contains their phones. The bride plunges an axe into Patrick, but he dodges it and runs to a nearby billboard. However, the bride wounds his leg, but he still ascends the billboard ladder. As for the group who escapes, infected women surround them in the street. From the billboard, Patrick searches the duffel bag, but only to see golf balls. So he strikes the balls like baseball at the infected women surrounding his friends. After the distraction, Vince and Matt hide in a toy shop, while the soldier, Graham, and Mikey are in an apparel shop. Meanwhile, Neil throws Patrick's scattered golf balls and infected equestrian and a granny zombie. He then hides inside a house beside the church, thinking he's safe, when suddenly, someone knocks him out. At the toy store, Vince fends off against the snipper who almost gets in, because they forgot to lock the door. Matt pours nitro fluid for radio-controlled cars onto the snipper's hand, and inflames it using Vince's lighter. At the apparel shop, Graham watches as the snipper burns. But the soldier pulls him, and asks him to hide. Mikey then almost slips on the bloody floor, and finds a man's decapitated head on a shelf. Behind the fitting room is an infected sales lady, and the soldier fires his last bullet on her head. However, the sound of the fired gun attracts the infected outside. On the other side, Matt finds a walkie-talkie among the toy shelves. So he and Vince prepare the remote control car, place a walkie-talkie on it, and deliver it to the apparel shop to give it to the other group. Mikey successfully receives the walkie-talkie, and the two groups can finally communicate. But Neil is missing, because he's bound in a chair by an infected obese woman, called Ms. Fatty. Ms. Fatty crawls underneath the table, and stretches her fat muscles to reach Neil across, and severs his finger with an electric knife. Meanwhile, Patrick calms himself by listening from his iPod again, as the bride chops the billboard's stance. As for the two groups inside the apparel and toy shop, they formulate a plan. Mikey places the severed head on the RC car, and lets Vince control the toy. The soldier dances behind the glass to distract the horde, then Mikey and Graham set their decoy on the street. Once done, Vince rolls the toy's wheels, which successfully leads the horde out of the street. Mikey then exits to search for a useful car, needed for their escape. He did find a military truck, but its glass window is thick enough to break. 
Out of frustration, Mikey accidentally triggers the car's alarm, which attracts the horde feasting over the severed head. Mikey has no choice but to hide in the slaughterhouse. However, he's accompanied by an infected butcher slicing human limbs. The butcher throws Mikey off the window. After failing to hear news from Mikey, Vince and Matt hurry outside, equipped with Matt's makeshift flamethrower, using nitro fluid and Vince's lighter. However, Matt only made a big one, and gives the small water gun to Vince, to make him at least feel sexy. When they storm out of the toy store, the street is already empty. However, behind them is the infected witch, and Matt burns her with the flamethrower. The burning witch retreats, but the fluid leak from Matt's flamethrower causes the toy store to explode. Then there's Mikey, who successfully survives the butcher after being thrown out, returns to the apparel shop, while Vince and Matt run to the church. The two discover that the church is the military's former base, and Vince informs the group in the apparel shop via the walkie-talkie to head there. Afterward, the two explore the base, and find a bloody laboratory. Meanwhile, Patrick falls off the billboard, because the bride has finished chopping off its stand. He runs to the minibus, and finds Candy holding his club. He grabs it from her, closes the minibus, and strikes the approaching bride on the head. He arrives at the church and meets the soldiers, Mikey, and Graham, who are wearing dresses to blend in with the horde on the street. Later, Neil escapes from Ms. Fatty, and climbs up the roof, when the front door is swarmed by the infected. He finally sees his friends outside the church, but he passes through the roof, and falls inside the house again. Infected exotic dancers fill the room, who later fight one another, which allows Neil to escape. Neil reunites with his friends, and they all take shelter inside the church as the infected chase them. Inside, Matt reopens the computers, revealing the politician chained to a briefcase. The politician notices the unfamiliar faces, and immediately ends the call. Outside, the infected women evolve into Phase 2, where they become smarter, faster, and weirder, while Phase 1 is sickness, disorientation, and psychosis. The evolved bride chops the church's door, and the group inside panics. The soldier shows the dolphin that, if activated, will emit high-frequency sonic deterrents that produce a painful sound inclusive for women, and only effective after phase 2 mutation. However, when the soldier presses the button, nothing happens. The soldier panics, because they're dead meat. Neil then bursts out, scolding him that their experiment backfired on them. The soldier then reveals that the politician was the delivery girl, who distributed free one-wash soap containing the virus to each household. Suddenly, the soldier dies, as Mikey's infected Nan kills him. Matt walks from her behind, and brutally beats her head to death. Matt calms himself down in the laboratory after his rash aggressive outburst. But when Vince checks on him, the evolved and scorched witch pins and kills Matt. Vince quickly tells the group that Matt's dead, and the witch meets them outside the lab. Mikey instantly tackles her, and everyone cooperatively pins the witch, and uses her sword to kill her. The group then discovers that the church's basement contains a mountain of men's corpses. So the group locks themselves on the church's roof, as more infected women chase after them. Meanwhile, Banksy arrives at Mooley, and sees his friends on the rooftop. He brings the ladder, and thinks his friends are stone, when they say that women have become evil cannibals. They use the ladder to cross to another roof, but Graham stays behind first to block the door. Once everyone's on the other side, infected women gather on the grounds, waiting for them to fall. Graham tries to cross, but Miss Fatty shakes the ladder with her fat muscles, making Graham fall. Miss Fatty jumps down heavily at him with her diabetic meat, and everyone assumes the shitty Graham must be dead, due to the overweight strike and overdose of diabetes. Banksy then brings the remaining group to his rented small car. While they argue about Banksy's idiotic decision, Patrick confesses his desire to live longer. However, the snipper unexpectedly sneaks behind, and stabs him multiple times. Everyone then rushes to the minibus, where the remaining three of them fight against Candy. However, Banksy dies, as an infected woman penetrates a broken bottle on his chest, where his blood gushes out through the bottle. Inside the minibus, Vince gets mad at Neil and Mikey for surviving or getting away from trouble, despite their awful behavior towards women, while their friends, who treat women with respect, are rejected or killed. He realizes that there are women that get bored with a respectful gentleman, so he burns his ex-wife's photo with his lighter, and returns to his happy self, as he reconciles with the idea that what they see in him is what they get. The movie ends with the three friends driving away from Moodley at dawn. However, they hear Graham talk via walkie-talkie, who's kept in the basement. So Vince returns to Moodley, and is about to beat up the infected, when Graham suddenly activates the dolphin's power panel, immobilizing the infected. Graham ascends to the street, while holding the dolphin. Neil plays with the dolphin for a moment. But when he throws it at Vince, he fails to catch it, causing the control to break. 
the infected are now free from the deafening sound and chase after the four survivors who are laughing while running away. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.